Okay, this is a strange antenna on the bench today. I saw this on eBay and I had to get one. Um, one would call this a fractal antenna. Um, one would call it a PC board antenna. Uh, SMAN. It's got a, uh, some type of transmission line to this element. And this element then radiates, it acts as the antenna. And down here is a big, everything green. Here's our ground plane. This is solid copper back here. So there's a big reflector. So um, we've seen things that look like uh, discone antennas that are kind of like this, where there's a, a conical thing and then a, a, a top on the, a conductor on the top. But this is fed from the bottom. So what is it? Well, um, it's called a, a Serpinski, a Serpinski gasket. So. Um, Back in the day, <laughs> before Serpinski, this was a pattern that weavers and people would use. They didn't have a name for it, but uh, it is a repeating pattern. Uh, you start with a, a triangle, okay, and then you cut out a triangle in the middle, okay? So you take the whole thing and you cut out this triangle, okay? Then you're, you end up with, with this, which is a triangle, and then you cut out that, right? And then you end up with that, which is a triangle, and then you cut out that. So you just keep cutting out things until you end up with the final thing. And uh, Serpinski uh, recognized this and created a little bit of math behind it. And um, somebody looked at it and said, hey, that kind of looks like the head gasket off my engine. <laughs> Because you can, instead of uh, triangles, you can use circles as well uh, as different fractal shapes and things. Those came first, and then this is a little bit later. Um, and uh, so it's called a gasket, just because somebody thought it looked like one. Um, and it's also called the Serpinski Triangle. And uh, we're going to be talking about Serpinski uh, antennas, all right? So uh, before we play with this, let's look at some... Some things you can find online. Uh, here is something from Electronic Letters in 1996, talking about fractal multiband antenna based on the Serpinski gasket. There you go, and here's the Serpinski gasket, uh, just like ours. I uh, wonder where they got that idea. <laughs> um, so you can think of this, if you, if you think of the electrical length of this, there's one section here that's all connected along that edge there. That's like a wire, so it can resonate on that length, right? Here's, here's a wire here where it can resonate along that length. You know, here's a wire here, it can resonate along this length. So there are places that the RF energy can find to hang on to and create boundary conditions and stuff where, where it can kind of hang out and do its thing. And so it ends up being a multi-band antenna, okay? So this is from 0 to 12 gigahertz. And you can see that it's resonant at certain certain places. Uh, it's going to have a really, really... I can zoom down a bit here. It's going to have a really, really weird radiation pattern depending on frequency uh, and direction and stuff. So it is a very strange antenna. It's not going to have any gain. It's going to be more like a dipole um, and uh, it will get reflected up so it will have some gain because it has a reflector and gets reflected up um, so let's see what did this paper have to say I don't know if they had any anything else uh, different different weird radiation different weird radiation patterns here's one uh, this was an IEEE uh, on the behavior of the Serpinski multiband fractal antenna. Um, and so this talks about uh, the triangle and the different dimensions and different radiation, uh, different uh, uh, places where it can, uh, where it can actually oscillate. Um, so uh, that's that one. Uh, here is a, I think I got this out of somebody's thesis. I think this is a master's degree thesis that I found. 
um, Sierpinski fractal as a mono, sorry, Sierpinski fractal as a monopole. Um, and so you can think of it this way. There's a, there's a uh, reflector and then there's this triangle shaped thing above. Um, it's a lot like a bow tie antenna. In fact, that was the first uh, idea that people had was, uh, oh, if it's triangular shape, maybe we can do, we, maybe we can use it like a bow tie antenna. What's a bow tie antenna? Well, here's some. Um, uh, here's one made of solid copper sheets. So you feed the center here and these solid copper sheets, sheets look, like a, look like a bow tie. You can just have a wire loop around each side and have a bow tie. You can have the, the, the wire kind of make a path around it. And you can just have wires that stick out. These are all called bow tie antennas. You'll find them in uh, television reception antennas. That's uh, where, you, where you most likely will see them. So if you have a dipole antenna, okay, here's a dipole antenna and you replace one side with a, uh, a, a grounded sheet, you end up with a vertical, a vertical antenna, okay? So because the other half of the dipole gets reflected across the uh, ground plane here, and so if you put in a reflector, then you only need half of what you need. So if you start with one of these and you put in a ground reflector, you only, you only have half of what you need. And so you can put the ground plane here and guess what? You end up with one of these. So that's where the idea came from. Somebody said, hey, you, if you can do this, you can do this. And this one will be multi-band. This will be single band or a wide band because of the weird shape and stuff. Okay, so um, let's put this on a VNA. All right, I've calibrated the VNA and hooked it up. So here is the antenna and it is connected to the VNA. There you go. We get some dips, one better than the other. Uh, so we'll take a closer look at these. Uh, I've taken some pictures of the screen, but uh, this is my test setup. You can see that it's, um, it is multi-band as per the um, articles that we've seen. Uh, this particular antenna seems to resonate at uh, the longest it resonates, or the short, however you want to think of it. <laughs> uh, the highest frequency it resonates at is around um, uh, 5.6 gigahertz, and then around 3.3 gigahertz, and then 2. Point, uh, call it 2.35 gigahertz, something like that, right? Um, so, you know, it's a small antenna, so it's not going to do well with long, uh, long wavelengths. It has to be, it has to fit in here. So the longest wavelength will be this long, long thing here. So that will be a quarter wave right there. Um, so that's probably the uh, two gigahertz. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about right for two gigahertz. So. Well, there you go. Uh, some other interesting things here is, like I said, it has these two ground planes and they are stitched together. So there's uh, RF stitching all along the edges. So the front and the back have copper. And also the Sierpinski gasket is duplicated on the front and back and it has a whole bunch of stitching via. So it's all solid from top to bottom. So that was an interesting choice that they made. Uh, that's how I did my Yagi antenna. I had top, front, front, and back. Um, I didn't bother stitching them together because it didn't seem to matter in my particular instance, but it probably does here. But yeah, there you go. You want to get yourself into fractal uh, antennas. I don't really see a use for these. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, they're interesting. They're academic. Um, but as a something to use. It, these are multiples of each other in some weird geometric way. And so the places that they, the places that they are resonant, um, if you can't change. You can't say, okay, I want to resonate at this frequency and this frequency. The shape wouldn't fit. So you kind of get what you get. 
So, like I said, so how, how would that be useful? Why, unless for some reason you can build the antenna first and then choose the two frequencies your radio is going to operate on. It doesn't work that way in real life. So, yeah, I don't know. Comment below if you've ever seen one of these in actual practice. Somebody actually using those in a real world application other than just for, just for fun. Um, otherwise, I think it's just an academic exercise. All right, and just for fun, here is a Sierpinski pyramid. Uh, yeah, the triangle in three dimensions. You can hold it at certain certain angles, and you will see you will see the triangle. And um, the algorithm for making one of these would be similar. You would start with a triangle, uh, a pyramid, then you would subtract a pyramid, then you would subtract a smaller pyramid, then you would subtract little pyramids. You keep subtracting things, and then each each uh, piece of the pyramid is uh, similar to the to the large one, and that's the idea of a fractal. Is everything is scalable. So yeah, there you go. That was kind of fun. It was fun to print. Uh.